Beings, people, other dear digital things. <laughs> you're watching Healthy Vibe. I'm trying to push in dear, guys. You dear digital things because you're also kind of digital because I don't see you all in person and I'm on a digital format. So dear digital things. Okay, that's that's what it, you know how some YouTubers have their little sayings for. Hey, okay, and they call you guys the names. You guys are gonna be dear digital things, people, or other things that you want to be classified. I'm gonna say it again. Let me start over. <laughs> Hey there, beans, people, other dear digital things you're watching health be mine. If this is your first time here, hey, I am dear Danny, your self-investment storyteller, ready to practice some perspective shifting and creative thinking here on the web. Today, I have a fun assignment. I want to go into another video on Instagram, but we're going to look at a perspective that could be different than how a lot of people in the mindset or spiritual space have seen or heard before and I want us to dig into it a little. Before we get into it, I want to give a special thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Keen. Thank you, Keen, for sponsoring today's video. Keen is an incredible resource that perfectly complements your self-awareness journey, a platform designed to elevate your quest for self-discovery, just like an introspective act of journaling. Through Keen, you can connect with experienced spiritual advisors, uncovering topics on love, relationships, personal growth, self-discovery, and wellness. Consider Keen.com as a conversation, the catalyst for self-awareness and experience Imagine approaching Keen.com with your journaling and ideas, embracing the power of diverse thought, and connecting with experienced mentors who will help you uncover the hidden gems within. It's where your attentions meet a diverse world of perspective, exploring the profound questions that lead you toward a deeper understanding of yourself. You can kickstart that journey in your first 10 minutes would be just a dollar 99 using my link www.keen.com forward slash help be mind. Click connect and come prepared with your thoughtful questions. All right, so I want to play this video, and this video is about empaths. And I'm not sure if any and everyone here watching this video knows what an empath is. So I'm going to answer it from, you know, <laughs> that's ChatGPT. So I'm going to go to ChatGPT, and ChatGPT, tell us, for those who don't know what an empath is, then once we look at this definition, we're going to go and listen to the video. So here's what ChatGPT share with us based on its knowledge from 2021. Empath is a term used to describe a person who has heightened ability to understand and share the emotions and feelings of others. Empaths are often very sensitive to the emotional energy of people around them and can easily pick up on subtle emotional clues, even if they are not explicitly expressed. This heightened sensitivity can allow them to be more empathetic and compassionate as they can better relate to the emotional experiences of others. Empaths may find it challenging to navigate highly emotional or crowded environments because they can become overwhelmed by the emotions they absorb from others. They may also need to take steps to protect their emotional well-being, such as setting boundaries and practicing self-care. It's important to note that the concept of being an empath, it's important to know that the concept of being an empath is often associated with intuition and emotional sensitivity, but it is not a scientifically recognized or valid term in psychology or psychiatry. However, many people use the term to describe their own experiences and feelings of heightened empath. So this is interesting that ChatGPT shared this because I'm gonna go ahead and share this video with you all about someone who works in psychology. Let me just give you a little bit of background on this person that I found on the internet. Her name is Raquel Martin. She has a PhD and she's proud of it. She is Dr. Raquel Martin and she is a psychologist. She's an assistant professor, a host at Mind Your Mental Podcast. She has 1 million, I guess, viewers across social platforms and she's into mental health and social justice together. So this is a page if you're interested and getting some insight on just thinking in a psychologist form, you might want to follow. But I've only seen a little bit of our content, but I thought this was interesting. So let's go ahead and watch the video. So something that I feel like should be talked about more in mental health community overall is this concept of being an empath. Now, I in no way feel like I don't believe in that aspect of impasse, but I do want you to understand the whole concept of when you stay ready, you don't have to get ready, can also be an aspect of hypervigilance. 
Um, you're, you can tell by the way that your parent used to, um, if they started stomping heavier than normal, that they were in a bad mood, so you were going to stay out the way. Um, you can tell uh, what is going to set your parent off and how that's going to have a chain reaction to you. So you um, shrunk yourself and paid attention, really, really, really deep attention to energies. You had to be very much aware and hypervigilant of the spoken and non-spoken context, not around just around your family, but around other families, because you need to know if you need to hide, if you can be present, if you can be yourself, or if it's safe here. I'm not saying I don't believe in the aspect of empaths. I am saying, however, um, it has been my experience that a lot of time that reading energies, being sensitive to energies, um, being significantly exhausted, being around people because you have to be hypervigilant. So your nerves are on 10 a lot. Um, social battery running out incredibly quickly. Uh, always feeling as though you have to accommodate other people. I've also found that a lot of times that's the result of being reared or being significantly in detrimental environments. And I think that should be talked about more that hypervigilance. All right, friends. So that's the video. Before we get into the general questions that I want to share with you all as it relates to this video, two things. I want to know your raw thoughts. How do you receive this information? Were you identified as an empath? Are you one of those people who don't believe in empaths? Was there anything that you took from this video or you resonate with? Now for Dear Danny. Again, for those who are here for the first time, Dear Danny is not a thought that it's owned by you. It's a thought that's owned by me and I'm being dear in this thought and I'm being very patient with myself because I'm an evolving being and I don't know all things, but I do have a response to this thought. When I saw this video initially, I thought, hmm, this is interesting because wait, we are shifting something that I've heard often about empaths being, you know, sensitive to emotion and then bringing it into the world of therapy and psychology. Psychologist is speaking. And I send it to one of my friends who identifies herself as a spiritual practitioner. She works in the spiritual sense of things and does very well. And I really respect her thoughts. I respect her thoughts. And so I said, what do you think about this video? And she gave me her feedback. And so now I'm, I'm looking at both of these, you know, points of view. And I'm like, hmm, both of these thoughts have validity. As a person who was deciding to make my own decision on how I receive it or take a, take away from this thought, I do want to journal about it. So let me just share with you a few different ways that we can journal about this idea of emotional sensitivity being attached to our childhood trauma, for one. I think that's interesting because even if it's attached to our childhood traumas, maybe that childhood trauma is a part of that spiritual journey of you being an empath. So it could be connected. I don't know, guys, but I'm gonna be done with my my dear Danny thought just just in case I just go somewhere I confuse you all into confusion land. But let's go into some journal questions that could be helpful for you all if you're trying to understand if your emotional sensitivity is more than you thought initially. So self reflection on emotions. So how do I generally feel in social situations? Do I tend to absorb the emotions of those around me? Does that mean that you're an empath or does that mean that you are just sensitive to emotions? I'm not sure, but it's interesting to take that journey. Have those questions for yourself and just identify it. How do I react to highly emotional or stressful situations? Do I find them overwhelming? And I wouldn't even identify what those stressful situations are. That can be helpful for you understanding. Like for me, I don't like to go to the mall on the weekends. I don't like to go to any place on the weekends because everybody's out with us. But I've come to an agreement with myself that I do want to live life on the weekends. And so I have to be mindful of where I go. Some places are still going to be crowded, but in the depends on all the other factors. Do I have the children with me? Am I, you know, I don't know, insert thing here, but it all depends on how I feel. So going into some other questions that could be helpful to you. I think they're helpful to me. Um, do I notice any physical reactions when I'm emotionally charged in a situation? So if you got a response from a lover or someone at work, what happens to you physically? Like, do you, does your heart get tight? Do you get tight identify those and then just list those situations out just so that you can have a note for yourself and and then really lean into that fear of whatever's going on i think a lot of this is attached to fear for me i am in situations where i think most people are in situations where if it feels uncomfortable your body just starts to wiggle i wiggle i don't really wiggle but like my body needs a wiggle like if i if, if someone says something to me and i'm like oh, 
that was uncalled for. You know, it depends on what it's what's said and depending on what else what else is going on in my life. I'm like uh, okay. Um, yeah. So moving on to more questions. How about thinking about our childhood? Were there any early experiences or events in my life that I can remember that may have influenced my emotional sensitivity? And then how did my family or caregivers respond to my emotional expression as a child? This is a good question because I try to be mindful of what it's like being a parent and speaking to my children when they are very upset about something that seems really small in my world, but they're world is a lot smaller so it's probably really big in their world and I act like a child when something happens in my world so it's like oh run America is like odd up to me and I'm like on the floor like why can't I just let me just this. I am like a child, so I have to be able to connect with my children when in their world, you know, having someone take away something on, on the table that belongs to them is devastating. Just understanding one another and understanding ourselves and our situation is a good way to start with journaling. But before I close out, I just want to know what you guys think about Empath. Share it in the comments. Let me know if you believe in it, if you don't believe in it, and just give me a little bit of feedback of why. Because even if I share a thought here and you don't agree with it, be, because I know some people don't really attach with certain statements and words and they you know it's not a part of their journey and they're against and ah, I want you to also consider bringing yourself into the conversation and adding your expertise in life because if you're an expert in life in a certain situation and you know why that's wrong I want to hear it and I want to hear your back and behind it as well because the more the more we have conversations with each other the more we can learn that we might have the same goal and we just have different paths of getting to that goal and at the scene I'll be talking today I enjoy being here with you all which is just me and my world really and you hopefully watching and liking and commenting and subscribing right now until next time hold on to you as much as you can and hold on to your health your wealth your well-being and your mind be mindful bye this experience is brought to you by peaceequations.com choose life choose joy Choose peace over chaos.